I'm Dr. Randy Martin, and we're here at the 2023 AATS Mitral Conclave, and I'm pleased to be joined by Richard Whitlock. Richard, you're going to tell me a little bit about the LEAPS trial. Sure. Yeah. So uh, the LEAPS trial falls on the coattails of a trial called LEAS-3. Right. So LEAS-3 was a trial that ran in 105 centers, 27 countries, randomized 4,811 patients. And we conclusively showed that in patients coming for heart surgery with atrial fibrillation, if you occlude the appendage, you reduce the stroke risk long-term of these right. patients. So big impact. LAS-3 will result in saving thousands of strokes globally every year, as long as it's, there's uptake by the cardiac surgeon. Yeah. One of the questions I get when I present LAS-3 is, should we just not do this in everybody? Well, the evidence is not there yet because the preliminary evidence from observational data says, if you just occlude the appendage in someone without atrial fibrillation, you actually may increase post-operative atrial fibrillation. We don't know the relevance of that, and we don't know what happens long-term. Right. So what LEAPS is doing is it's taking people with sick atrium. We know that they're on the pathway to atrial fibrillation, but they've not yet manifested atrial fibrillation. So their atria are dilated. Okay. They have elevated BNP. Okay. Their CHADS VAS score is up. They're coming for heart surgery for some other indication. And this is about 55 to 60% of the patients. Because you imagine valvular disease leads to problems with atrium, Absolutely. hypertension, age, all the factors that lead to cardiovascular disease also cause atrial fibrillation. Well, they're on our table now. They've got this sick atrium that's not so sick that has AF yet. And we have the opportunity to do a very safe procedure and occlude the appendage. And we want to prove that by doing that in that type of patient, we reduce the long-term stroke risk in those patients. So we'll randomize 6,500 patients in 250 centers across the world. The same disease coming, same conditions coming to, for surgery. Right. Cabbage, yeah. with the left edge. Yeah, there's there's really no exclusion in terms of the procedure. It has to be done by the sternotomy. Okay. Okay. It is a- What's excluded? So uh, obviously people with very short life expectancies, people with active endocarditis, we don't want in, right. right? Because they may contaminate. It's a device. This is a partnership between my institution, Population Health Resource Institute, right. Right. and the uh, sponsor of the trial, Atricure. It's using the Atriclip. So there is foreign body left behind. Aortic stenosis? In. Mitral disease? In. Yeah. Okay. okay. Coronary disease? In. Aortic disease? So you're looking at stroke prevention. Correct. What's the downside of doing that? Well, we'll see. Uh, again, these people do not have atrial fibrillation. There is some preliminary evidence suggests that maybe it does increase post-operative atrial fibrillation. Maybe that's transient. Uh, maybe it's not. We'll see. The other thing is we do know that the atrial appendage is a compliance chamber. Yep. So maybe in these younger patients who are in sinus rhythm, perhaps we will infringe upon their ability to exercise. Maybe there's a heart failure signal. We did not see that in LAOS 3, but we need this robust data to be confident that this is safe to do. And if it turns out it's safe to do and it works, we're going to prevent tens of thousands of strokes oh, yeah. across the world. Yeah, there's no doubt. As, as we were talking earlier, I mean, atrial fibrillation is a, not only has a stroke risk, but it has a morbidity risk to the patients. I mean, it's, it's just staggering. So I think if it's beneficial, it'd be great. It's a very safe procedure to do on all comers. Yeah, so in Laos 3, in which we allowed different type of epicardial occlusion, including the atrial club, it added about six minutes of operative time, which really is not clinically meaningful, no. right? So didn't increase heart failure, didn't cause excessive bleeding. And I would argue that the atrial clip, which is a non-occlusive device, don't have to open the chamber, is perhaps even right. safer than just what we do is amputation and, and close, probably as a majority procedure. Post-operatively, no change. In other words, no increase yeah. in chest pain, pericarditis, any of those sort of things. So again, there, there is a safety endpoint of LEAPS. This is an FDA trial. So we'll be tracking issues like bleeding, right. in, mediastinitis, creating pericardial fusion, needing intervention. So that's a safety oh, outcome of the, of the trial. So this is going to be a, a very robust data set. But what's interesting is not only are we going to answer this question about stroke, but we're going to further the knowledge on atrial cardiomyopathy. This entity of oh, a yeah. diseased atrium that progresses to atrial fibrillation will understand how it progresses, who it progresses in, and maybe there's some other novel targets that we'll identify yeah, in this process. It's a very real entity. I can tell you, you get an aging population with hypertension and, and even aortic stenosis valve disease, it's a real entity. Yeah, so, so it's gonna be a, a lot, there's gonna be a lot to learn from this trial. We're incredibly excited. It's recruiting like crazy. <laughs> We've already opened in the, the US, it's recruiting at about 200% of what we expected. We've already recruited about 140 patients since January 28th. We think we'll finish early, knock on wood, and we'll have the evidence 
early, but like I say, I'm excited to really further the knowledge in this field. It's super. I've, it's an exciting trial and, and hopefully you've already done so much in preventing stroke prevention. It's stroke. So I hope that this will continue. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for uh, joining on this fascinating trial. Stay tuned.